Coming up right now, he's a decade old. Now he wants Apple to rethink its nerd emoji. We're going to tell you why. Also coming up, a preschool teacher is fired after applying mood calming patches to students without permission from mom and dad. Later on, with holiday travel at its height, imagine spending the night on a remote military base after your plane is forced to make an emergency landing. It's called adapt or die, right? <laughs> Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. And I am Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. We're so happy to have you here. We've got an hour pack with mm -hmm. trending news and entertainment. Matt, do a little standing Maddie. by there. Matt, are you getting ready for the uh, 2024? What are you looking forward to? Matt? I am, and as over the last three years I've learned just to prepare myself for whatever disaster happens. I'm, I'm figuring aliens. Aliens. aliens? Why not? That's had aliens. Aliens. Yeah, yeah, that's yes. true. 2024, mm -hmm. the year of the aliens. So write that down. Yes, aliens. Sure. I, you know, they'll have to fight with uh, the Starlings. Is, is Starling Matt system, mentioned? just to get through the traffic and all the <laughs> other garbage. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of flying around. And, and the Chinese spy balloons. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot going on a in space. A lot of traffic. Right? <laughs> Okay, have you heard of coffee badging? Coffee? Like the coffee, drink. like co like your coffee, coffee. and uh, no, badge, like your work badge. No, not at all. No, no. So tell me more. you're familiar with quiet quitting, right? Yes. Um, and the lazy girl jobs and all of this. Well, coffee badging is the response to all of these companies saying, hey, you got to get back to the office. We want you in house. So this is their silent I, protest. They okay. show up to the office, they have a cup of coffee. They check in and then they go yeah, back home. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, okay. because they like the to work from home. I've heard that there's also um, uh, within those companies people actually being paid yeah. to just take the, that other person's badge, check it in, oh, so that they know. So there's like a sub business oh. in that as well. And they're going and do and just drink, really? just go up and check it in. So who so, knows? You know, the job with us, you know, we're not here, you know it. I, I think it's time for people to get back to the office. I think so, too. I mean, at this point, I know it's lovely to be able to work from home in your PJs, but if your boss wants you back in the office, you got to get back it, to the it's office. Hard. It, it's a hard transition. Yeah. So Just, my fiancé has a fancy corporate job, unlike, yes. you know, my monkey job over here. And... Uh, that's how they entice them back to their office was, hey, we have this whole new free coffee oh. machine on every oh. floor. So she'll go in and load up a tumbler. So. Is, that, is that one of those fancy Starbucks machines oh, where yeah. it's automatic? Oh, yeah. She works for big, big, she's a big lawyer at big corporate. Well, so. well, what, uh, what Matt's not telling you, he, she gets the big tumbler and then he goes and sells it on the street. <laughs> it's a whole thing. He's making money. Man, man, make that side hustle. Yeah, a little side hustle. We go now to a 10 year old. Uh, I've always said, I believe that uh, children are our future and if you teach Teach them well. Mm -hmm. Let them lead the way. That's very nice. Uh, I don't believe that you should show all the beauty they have inside. <laughs> totally against Immortal that. words of uh, Maya Angelou. I don't know. Celine Dion. Celine Dion. No, uh, Whitney, Whitney Houston? Houston. Yeah. Anyway, a ten-year-old. <laughs> she's not supposed to go too deep with me. You know Sorry. that. Sorry. This ten-year-old's going deep though. He wants Apple to rethink their nerd emoji. The preteen says that the emoji makes him feel sad and upset, and he finds it offensive. There must be thousands of people around the world who find it offensive too. Popular icon features a bright yellow smiley face with thick rimmed glasses, big front teeth. The boy says the emoji reinforces stereotypes about kids who wear glasses. He's also shared his disappointment with teachers. Um, well, allow him to do that. I think I need to take him back to a little movie back in the 1980s called Revenge of the Nerds. The Revenge of the Nerds, and one of all, the best, one of the classics. One of the best in the world. And all of those nerds are the ones ruling the world now. Uh, yeah, right? exactly. They're the, in fact, they're the ones that put the nerd emoji on the Apple emoji They're the ones list. that did it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, hey, hey, I get, you know, I, keep it on there. I, I think I remember somebody protesting because there wasn't a mermaid um, emoji. Yes. You wind up and start a, uh, like going after, I want an emoji for us. You know, all right, you're not always represented at, by right. that sort of thing. But what's the wrong with a nerd? Listen, your kids, you're going to be teased no matter what. It sounds like he's at it. Just him ripping up the First of all, he's adorable. Oh, I mean, cute little, oh, kid. Cute yep. little kid. So he has nothing to worry about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure he, the girls are definitely going after him in the school. But <laughs> I mean, you're right, though. At what point do you say, I, I don't like coffee. I like tea. I don't want a coffee emoji on there. Where isn't there a hot tea emoji on there? And, and, and that's actually at that age. That's what's teaching you. Hey, you are different. And, you know, you have to learn. It's the bullying that we need to get yeah, away from. Absolutely. And he, I guess, is feeling like he's being bullied. I don't see how. But maybe teach him that lesson. Some parents in California were shocked to learn that a 
daycare teacher applied Zen patches on preschoolers without yeah. asking first. Parents said the mood calming stickers laced with essential oils were placed on children in the classroom, then removed before the students were sent home. News broke when a mother of one of the students showed up unannounced at the school, demanding answers. She wanted to know why the patches were being used to make her child sleepy without her consent. Parents also became suspicious when their children began to display strange moods and sleepy behaviors. <laughs> I love this. Strange moods and sleepy behaviors. The teacher has since been fired. Parents say they want more accountability. I can't believe this teacher. Yeah, you can't do that. Went ahead and did this. I mean, that's unacceptable. I, I love the strange mood. They were calm and they were actually obeying <laughs> me and listening to me. It's that you can't give that to kids, no matter what. I, I agree. Ooh. You know, if the parents are saying, "Yeah, it's fine. I don't mind." That's one thing. But to to but to really just go out and do it on your own is is highly because what's going to say are the kids not wanting to play anything? Let's give them a, a caffeine patch. Well, the other thing too is like you're doing about it going about it in a very sneaky way, right? You're putting it on when they get to school, but you're taking it off before they go home. Yeah, that's another. Different. And a couple of the kids, the patches didn't come off, and that's when the parents start to, they started to get suspicious. And, and can, you can consider that uh, you're drugging the kids more yes. or less. Yes, and that. you don't know what might interfere with whatever that kid might be on, or he could be allergic to something. That's scary. About uh, 250 Delta Airline passengers had to spend the night on a Canadian military base after their plane forced to make an emergency landing. The flight it went from Amsterdam to Detroit. It ran into some mechanical issues because of ice. Passengers waited on the tarmac about seven hours before wow. another plane arrived. However, that crew, when they got there, had reached their maximum work hours for the day and Jeez. needed time to rest between flights. This same thing happened to me, but I wasn't on a military base. Uh, the stranded passengers were all loaded onto school buses and then sent to a nearby military base. <laughs> and those Canadian military bases, they're not bad, though. No, Look at this. Not at all. <laughs> Delta says the customers would be compensated for the long delay, but it would be kind of scary. The incident that happened to me was a newer airline, and you've heard me talk about it here on the show. They, they said it was some rain in Florida, so we're going to land you in North Carolina. We get in North Carolina. And then they go, well, our, our pilot's been up in the air too long, so he's going home. Flight's canceled. And I'm like, all right, well, where's our flight? And I go, well, go look for one. Um, <laughs> I, I was literally go stuck. Look for one. And then the next day, you guys remember me yes. telling you. Yeah. So you know how, like, you can trail, like, where the airplane goes yeah. and everything? So they say, yeah, we got too much fuel. They said they had too much fuel on the plane the next day that I got on. And they had to just fly around the southeast. And the path, I could show it to you, it's just they're flying around in circles in this crazy thing. Things like this happen. I would be much, I'd feel much better knowing them on the ground if there's ice problems, right? So yes. the good thing is they they had a nice. And, uh, and they were provided with a place to stay overnight. I'm assuming that they the military barracks couldn't have been that bad, but at no. least they had a safe place to stay overnight. And Canadian bacon too, which yeah. is not bad, right? <laughs> and Tim Hortons. Yes, Tim and uh, Celine Dion. And Celine Dion. Uh, <laughs> there's your Celine, Celine Dion, Dion uh, reference. reference. So good. Yes. Uh, Creed star Michael B. Jordan says he's embarrassed after crashing his $429,000 Ferrari into a parked car. <laughs> the 36-year-old actor says it was an accident. He had his foot on the gas and was not able to stop in time. A reporter said he was trying to get video of the car when the security team tried to run him off from the scene. Oof. Police did not perform a field sobriety test and no charges have been filed. Jordan recently posted about a collaboration with Ferrari on his Instagram page. He's seen wearing the brand's clothes and driving one of their signature red cars. Before you can buy one of these cars, uh, you are required to take a class with its Ferrari or Ferrari, Lamborghini. Yeah. yeah, you can't. You have to be licensed to actually drive that particular kind of car. You can't just drive it off the lot. And you know, and I know you're not allowed to paint them if you buy yes, them, right? That's I, right. I, well, we saw the movie uh, yeah, Ferrari, Ferrari, which is interesting, but that one was blue, which was weird because yeah. they were always afraid about that. And it's not the shoe guy. It wasn't the shoe no, that no, no. messed it's, up, right? No. It's the other one. Do you act like how I am so far away out of pop culture? It's not the shoe guy. Who's the shoe guy, Maddie? It's a Michael Jordan. Michael, well, that's what his name was. No, that's a no, B Michael and B. Oh, oh, it's a boxer movie oh, guy. That's the actor. Oh, can I really quick? Yes. Um, he, he plays Creed. Yes. Okay. Do you know, I, I saw this thing where uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone, you know where he got the name Apollo Creed? No. Okay, this is a true story. I'm not making this up. He's going through, he said he he got some stolen books, right? And he was reading because he read a lot when he was young, when okay. he was writing Rocky. And he came across this North Carolina uh, book about North Carolina and everything. And he was looking out all the counties and the cities. And there's a city called, uh, in the, uh, called Apollo, 
in North Carolina, and the county is Creed County, no and that's where he got Apollo is Creed. That so, I love and this he, story. And he, he says, "I swear, I, I go, I swear to you, that's a true story. That's where he got the name Apollo wow. Creed." And now uh, it looks like uh, Michael B. Jordan's actually directing uh, the, the next Creed, the next or has some uh, yeah. at least executive producing it. So there you oh, go. How about that? Not going to have his car with him though. No, <laughs> no, he might be. Will he have he his might shoes? Have to take an Uber. He should have his shoes. He is a Jordan guy, okay. so he wears the Jordan shoes. He does wear the Jordan. <laughs> when your shoes. name is Michael B. Jordan, you have to. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. You have to stick around. Why? Please do, because more Daily Flash coming up right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Daily Flash. Mitch English along with the beautiful Andrea Hello. Jackson. Uh, are you worried about your inheritance since Grandpa just keeps on marrying women like he <laughs> changes his underwear? Well, you have every reason, actually, to be a little concerned because you could actually <laughs> lose out when the big guy kicks the bucket. Okay. All right, in all seriousness, no. Blending families could actually be the hardest thing to do when it comes to major finances. So how do you avoid and keep the peace? Here's some answers from insider.com. First off, use a trust to ensure lifetime income to the widow and provide assets mm -hmm. to the kids. More specifically, create a qualified terminable interest property trust that will lower your taxes and protect your family fortunes from your lawsuits. Now, Jackson, would you be willing to do something like this if uh, you were to actually marry later on into life? Yeah, I think it's really smart. And there are two I kinds agree. of trusts that you can establish. One is a, a irrevocable trust, which okay. means once you put that trust into effect, it can never be changed. Now, that's a little bit tricky, but it ensures that whatever so, sure. you decide at that particular moment is it is the word. This is it. Even though uh, so I might change my mind, this is you it. You would have to go back and redo undo it. the trust and then file a new one. And then there's a revocable trust, which is easy to do. You can go to a, an attorney or you can do it yourself online. It's fairly simple. Um, and that allows you to create a trust for yourself and name your trustee, you know, whoever it is that you want to put in charge of your trust. And that one allows you to make changes if you need to. Yeah, you know, I think, um, and again, these are things grandpa would have to yes, do. Exactly. <laughs> first off. Yeah. And uh, he's allowed to change it as you just mentioned yes. so I mean it is something I think as you get older because when you when especially because we are talking about second marriages your first yeah. marriage it's all about love you you come a little smarter when it comes to the second mm -hmm. one and you think things out so that might be something that obviously you want to do beforehand and the other thing you have to remember too is different states have different laws when it comes to common law marriage or second marriages so you have to be really careful about what it is that you've you know you've got invested and yeah. make sure that all of that stuff is clearly in writing and there's a lot of people, and I used to have this, we're like, I'm dead, what do I care? But that's really mean. It's actually a mean thing to do because there's lots of fighting that you can leave behind. You know, you want to leave behind a good legacy and, and, and looking forward to the future, even though that death is upon it, yeah. it's part of it. And it's it's something that you have to talk about with your family you members. Right, right, and yeah. if you've got kids, it's really important. And to leave clear instructions. There's nothing like leaving a giant mystery treasure hunt for somebody to figure out and un, you know undo and yeah. try and figure about, okay, where do we go for this? Where do we go for that? Aretha Franklin, we just remember, they, oh, they found that will in, in the yes. couch in, in all these years, you know, and <laughs> it wound up because she put a smiley face under her thing. That was the only thing that they went through about years and years. Well, birds and relationships, what do they have in common? No, not the stuff you find on your car after paying 30 bucks <laughs> to get it cleaned at the car wash. Sorry for the rant, but we've all been there, right? The bird is now part of a test trending on social media. It examines how your partner reacts to you talking about something insignificant or boring like a bird outside oh, of a window. Okay. Now, if your partner responds with genuine curiosity, it's a sign that your relationship will probably last a long time. All right, now the bird test is different from the orange peel theory and is actually based on research conducted by the Gottman Institute. By the way, the orange peel theory is if you sit down and I, hey, you want an orange? Mm -hmm. And I just give it to you, that means I don't love you as much unless I peel it and hand it to you. This is actually has some science behind. Has it. nothing to do with the gym membership at the orange. Peel right, <laughs> the orange peel, right? Or that stuff theory. you put on the wall before you paint it. <laughs> or the stuff. orange glow. Or, you know, orange, orange, orange glow, glow. either. I don't I, know. We're probably all guilty of this, being mm -hmm. on our cell phones way too yes. much. Maybe from the bedroom to the toilet, we're always on our phones. For Gen Z, technology is actually making them the loneliest generation. There's a new survey out by businessinsider.com <laughs> and you got here's our crew right there. Uh, that says nearly 30% of Gen Z's. Aiden. He's like, what we? Aiden, yes, yes, we're talking about you. Believe that technology and social media have made them much more lonely. It's a slightly higher percentage than for millennials. This is a little different than the awesomest generations of boomers and Gen Xers. Uh, some Aiden, argue. are you millennial or Gen Z? 
He's Gen Z. Okay. okay. The latter actually being the best, some say. The, the Gen X? G yes. yes of course. Again, keep on. Our producer is a Gen X who wrote all this. The generations <laughs> uh, did not believe technology made them lonelier. However, you know, we, we're blaming this on them. Gen Xers and Gen Zers and everybody, we are attached to it. We kind of briefly mentioned this the other day. I was reading a survey, uh, or a study that psychologically having a phone in your hand, mm -hmm. even with somebody, it's saying that, that you are, it's like when you give somebody a present, you don't just go here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hey, I want you to have this because I find this very, very uh, precious. Mm -hmm. And when you have a phone in your hand, psychologically, according to this, uh, this uh, study, it, is that it's saying that you value this more than what this is, as talking. So just set it down. Right. Keep it away from you. And, and you will be amazed how much your life will actually, a relationship will actually easier change. Easier said than done, it's though, Very right? much easier. Right? But it, it does act as sort of a barrier, like a protection barrier or a comfort blanket, I think, for a lot of people, because they can remain busy and occupied so that they don't look like they're just standing there doing nothing. At, at right? parties? At parties. Is, exactly. is a big deal. 100%. I do love it when you go to a show. Um, some of the shows now are making you put your phone into a pouch, which you hang on to it's automatically locked and if you need to get into it you can go and unlock it right but it forces everybody to actually have conversations with one another and enjoy the show not constantly recording it on your phone because when are you ever going to watch that I agree ever. I love the fact with my watch it's connected to it and you can put it on theater mode so it doesn't if somebody does text yeah. me it doesn't pop up but uh, I'll get notification and if I choose to have to look at it but I'm not going to find myself, you know, oh, here, excuse me one second, doing that. But if somebody really needed to get a hold of me, they could. Yeah. But if, you know what, when I was growing up, we didn't have them. And we were sure. fine, and yes. we did okay yes. with it. It's okay. It's so weird how we, we feel that we have to have And it. especially for students in school, because you were talking about being a substitute teacher and kids saying, well, what, how am I going to, what, what's going to happen in a case of an emergency? Well, there have been emergencies in the past when we lived without cell phones, and we managed. Yeah, Your you teacher right. probably has a cell phone. Um, back to the cell phone, the theater mode, though. Yeah. When you're in the movie theater, it drives me nuts. No longer is it just about talking on the phone, but it's constantly going off or someone scrolling through Facebook in the middle of the movie. Movie. It, it, and and your eyesight will be drawn to it no matter yes. what because it's a dark thing. It's brought. Uh, so there is a thing if you have an, at least the Apple. Just you'll see the little happy and smiley face. Yeah. Turn that on because when you're in a movie because if you happen to raise your hand it gl it'll glow and it will turn it off to do that that's, that's what that thing okay, is that's good to know yeah, yeah. you don't do that no oh, i didn't know that thank you i all just right. turn my phone off just turn it off yeah. that's your best bet all right Melinda. we have more flash after Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. Lauren Fix, the car coach, hey, she's going to let us know why car prices continue to rise and what you can expect when you head to the dealership. It's all in today's Car Smarts. Cars are just getting too expensive, and now dealers and buyers are finally agreeing there has been a sharp rise in new and used car prices since the pandemic has left many buyers concerned if they can even afford a vehicle. And now some dealers are worried along with you. And some dealers have been saying that the elevated prices and the lack of affordable models already are keeping some prospective buyers away. And now higher interest rates and limited supplier cars are making it even more difficult for customers to make the math work on a monthly basis. In some cases, buyers are canceling the orders they placed before the interest rates rise even higher, and dealers are concerned. Some auto retailers are trying to increase their used car inventories to make it more affordable for some buyers. The root cause for the lack of affordable vehicles is the supply chain disruption that created new vehicle scarcity in recent years, resulting in a seller's market for used cars. Meanwhile, automakers have cut output of vehicles at the lower end of the price scale, choosing instead to emphasize on their most profitable models at higher price points and more luxury. Dealers expect the pressure will hurt total vehicle sales until the availability improves. Not being able to offer any incentives or discounts in new rides is also a huge negative impact. While vehicle inventories are rebuilding, they remain at about half the pre-pandemic level, and automakers expect relatively tight supplies at least to the end of 2023. If supply doesn't return soon, then those available new cars will be priced out of reach for most middle-class households. The vehicle shortage upended the car market for more than two years. Limited dealership inventory means the dealers essentially are selling every vehicle they can get their hands on, while consumers frequently paid over manufacturers' suggested retail price and book values, which I highly suggest you don't do, 
further stoking demand, a combination of low interest rates and record high prices for used cars, which new car buyers often trade in, often offset their purchase price. That is all gone. Things have changed. There are some issues for those who do buy new vehicles. The National Auto Dealer Association warns that rising monthly payments aggravated by high interest rates are expected to keep a lid on sales. It's also important to note that more Americans are falling behind on their car payments these days than before with the high inflation, cooling job market, and other challenges. Unfortunately, this leads to a growing number of auto repossessions, and the trend is expected to continue. I'm Lauren Fix, and you can find this information on my website, carcoachreports.com and dailyflashshow.com. Well, thanks, Lauren. Well, Christmas is over, and even though all those experts told you not to get a new pet, the next traumatic event for your pets, especially those of you with those new ones, is New Year's Eve. And take it from me, I live in the metro area around here, and people start sending those fireworks off uh, today. So here are a few tips to take care of your furry friends when the boom booms and bubblies go off. Tire out your pet before the festivities. Run them around outside before the fireworks start going. If you've got a cat like me, start playing with them early so they get worn down and they're not all running around like normal. Keep your pet away from the dangerous substances. Now, we're going to be consuming some dangerous substances ourselves, but, you know, anything extra around the house that you may have for the fireworks, for your drinks and guests, make sure those are put away. And be careful when you're walking outdoors. There's still going to be, you know, uh, debris from the New Year's Eve stuff. There's going to be sparkler sticks. There's going to be all that out there. So be careful with that and create a safe space. Now, I'm not saying you got to run out and get them one of those thunder vests, which kind of work and don't, but maybe if they're comf more comfortable in the bedroom, take their bed in their uh, doggy bed in there or the bathroom. Uh, I know my dad's dog used to just go to the bathroom, which I thought was more echoey, but that's where she preferred it. And keep their routines. I don't run them out too early, but try to keep them on their normal schedule. If they usually go to bed early with you, try to get them to go. Because even though you're going out and party until midnight, they may not want to. And if you can, try not to leave them alone. This is going to be a very big traumatic night for them, especially if they're new puppies for you. So if you can bring them with you, although you will be introducing them to a lot more people and stimulus, but they're going to want to be near you. And if they're older dogs who are kind of used to it, they're still going to want that comfort of having you with them. Now, a couple other things you can do is try to keep you, like we said, somewhere soundproof, like a bedroom or a closet, you know, take the business, get that done early before the boom booms go off and feed them early. So if they start to get sick later on, maybe you're there before you go out to clean them up. And I, I know with my cat last year, he doesn't really care, so we're not that worried, but I know some of them freak out. And Mitch, I know you've got a couple new cats there, so what are you kind of anticipating? Okay, that? so I have two, they have two different personalities. Uh, Jake is, he'll, he'll be okay with it, but Finn will like crazy, just act crazy whenever there's loud noises and stuff. So uh, what Liza has told us to do, we're gonna keep them in the back and get plenty of blankets for the bed, just so that they can kind of just, they feel like there's this one blanket where it kind of feels like mama cat, I guess. And so mm -hmm. she'll kind of, he'll, he'll bunch up into that. So that's our plan. This is our first New Year's with cats, but it's going to be interesting for sure. And it's like I was saying, we're both in kind of a metro area, yeah. and these kids go get their fireworks today and start blowing them off until oh, after the first of the year. So we got to get ready for that early. All right. Yeah, it's good plan there. Thank you, Matt. Good furry friends there, buddy. We got more trendy news and entertainment coming up after this. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson, and... Mitch English, trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. Welcome to Daily Flash. I want y'all to be watching this show. Jackson's got these cool lace red pants on. Oh, do you like these? Yeah, these so are kind of funky, huh? I pulled yeah, those out of there. I, like, I was like, those are really, really cool. The, uh, uh, did you get this today. for Christmas? Yes. How was your Christmas, by the way? It was really good. Yeah. How was yours? Happy my, Boxing Day, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, today's Boxing Day. Today's also my mother's birthday. Happy birthday, Mom. And um, the uh, Christmas was wonderful. I was over uh, uh, hanging out with the in-laws in uh, the Villages, which is a basically a retirement <laughs> For swingers. You bring your loofahs? <laughs> Everybody no, says that. <laughs> I know but, they do. <laughs> yeah. I think I might want to live there, man. It's oh, a, it's awesome. Because of the, it, it, they always have stuff going on everywhere. And the golf carts. The golf I want to live in a community where I can just drive a golf cart everywhere. Four o'clock every day, they roll up in their golf carts to the city center with whatever's in their tumbler. We won't say, but we know. Yeah. And then they have fun. It's, they have a PSA at the beginning of movies when you see it there to not drink and drive in your golf cart. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> you know that's a we, party town. Yeah, you know, and, they, and what's so great is they have like these little town squares, and they'll have a movie theater there, and it looks just like days of old, where it's just like the old time. Anyway, it's, it's really pretty really cool. neat. The question, the reason I was asking that, when yeah. do y'all bring take down your Christmas trees? Oh, you know what? End of January. End of January. Yeah. What about you, Maddie? About mid-January. Mid-January yeah. is when you're supposed to do it, according to experts. 84% of people say they take down their Christmas tree sometime in January, but 51% take them down on New Year's Day. Oh. And we're generally, I think it all depends on if you're going to take it out to the, you know, trash or yes. recycle it or whatever, because they we have a great uh, recycling system in our in our neighborhood. So ours probably the probably uh, mid. Probably January 5th or 6th or so. They say that's generally right around the average somewhat. I think if you've got the real tree, maybe you take it down sooner. Probably so because it's dying so well, much, but we got a great People are putting them up in August now, so I mean, they just Why not, right? leave them up year round. Can I tell you, I went to Costco the other day, um, you know, and we're still, uh, you know, close to the holidays and whatnot. Everything's changed. It's now all summer stuff. So, really? Already? Yes. We're not, wow. even, we're not even to the end of the year yet, and all of a sudden we're now buying for summer. Wow. Yeah. Uh, change I, I got to tell you, yeah. Try to, you kind of want to move on for the new year and everything, yeah. but it seems like there's a little bit you want to hold on when it comes out. I, I so agree. I can see that. So there you go. Well, a 10 year old wants apples where we think they're nerd emoji. The preteen says the emoji makes him feel sad and upset and he finds it offensive. There must be thousands of people around the world who might find it offensive too and agree with him. The popular icon features a bright yellow smiley face with thick rimmed glasses and big front teeth. There you go. The boy says the emoji reinforces stereotypes about kids who wear glasses. He also shared his his disappointment with his teachers. All right, so I'm going through the emojis now. There's a Tom Cruise one. There's a Groucho Marx one, yes. right? Uh, uh -huh. There's one with stars. So people who have stars are going to have to be offended. And there's a Taylor Swift one. There's a t <laughs> oh, yeah, there, is that it right there? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, and then they have one where a guy's head blows up. I take offense to that because I have scars on my head. Uh, and then the scream. Uh -huh. And you got to make sure it's the right color of the person. Exactly. Well, you know, else. you can change that. What is this one? Have yeah. you asked, what is oh, that is the salute. Oh, it's a salute. It's a salute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very cool. I'd never do that. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I, I ever really go through these uh, to see why you have it. Um, I don't understand a lot of them, but people have it. And if the kid's offended by it, get, um, I, I got uh, some rude awakening. <laughs> yeah. It's going to get worse. Yeah. It's going to get a lot worse. And the nerds <laughs> are what change tomorrow. So he, cute kid, though, yeah, right? Exactly. I, I'm actually envious of his glasses. I, I will go as far as to say the nerds are the ones that put that emoji no, on your phone. You are one because they all work for Apple and they're making millions of dollars. So it's a good thing to be a nerd. More parents in California shocked to learn that a daycare teacher applied Zen patches on preschoolers without asking first. Parents said that the mood calming stickers, they're laced with essential oils, were placed on children in the classroom, then removed before the students were sent home. I think that's where the craziness comes yeah. in. News broke when a mother of one of the students showed up unannounced uh, at the school demanding answers. She wanted to know why the patches were being used to make her child sleepy without her consent. Parents also became suspicious when the child began displaying strange moves and sleep behaviors. Mm -hmm. What about the de misters in the class? What if a teacher had one of those misters that oh. put the, um, uh, the, the essential, the essential oils, oils out in the, the air? I think it's the same thing. I I mean, yeah. So, so they're, if they can't do that, what would you think that they would be okay with putting a sticker on? Shouldn't they have to ask the parents That's where it needs to come out. It wouldn't bother me if my kid will like, right. oh, yeah, I know my kids. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> but you're 100% right. You should definitely do that. Thank you. Yeah. In this day and age. Exactly. All well, right. Stay with us. Still more to come. Life Love Shopping, right around the corner. Gosh, yes, next. Shipt, the retail technology company that connects customers to delightful delivery, is actually showing up in a big way, sharing savings and reliable solutions as the final hours of the shopping season are upon us. Julie Coop, Shipt shopping expert and vice president of communication, joins us now with the benefits of Shipt. The Christmas holiday may be behind us, but there's no better time to give yourself the gift of time than right now. Shipt is offering our annual membership, which gets you unlimited deliveries all year long on all of your essentials. Normally that's $99, but until December 30th, it's $49. So stock up on those things that you're going to need to help you tackle those New Year's resolutions and continue to entertain your long-staying holiday company this season. 
For all of these deals and solutions, visit shipped.com slash season of savings. And while you're there, be sure to check out Ship's new AI-powered search feature, which allows you uh, to shop for all of the things that you might need in the new year. Let's say you're somebody who wants to eat healthy or adopt a new fitness routine. You just type that into the search bar and it's going to return all of the items that you need to help maintain that healthy lifestyle in the new year. Again, that's ship.com slash season of savings. If you live it, love it, or bite, we talk about it right here on Life Love Shopping. Check this out. A new way to cure what ails you could soon be coming to a gym or office complex near you. It's being called the world's first AI doctor's office, and it will be arriving in the U.S. next year. The Care Pod is a self-service cube where patients can be screened for a variety of health issues related to diabetes, hypertension, depression, even anxiety. It can even do skin exams to check for signs of cancer. And and the results come in real time. These med pods can even allow users to draw their own blood. Experts say it doesn't use needles, just a vacuum chamber on the arm. The process of applied pressure is being compared to something like a leech or even a hickey. No word yet whether the blood draw technology in the care pods have been approved by the FDA. The first three med pods will be installed in Sacramento, Chandler, Arizona, and Chicago. The membership fees will start at $99. She's being called a real-life mean girl and the latest social media sensation. Her name is Evelyn, and she's a Gen Alpha teen from Kansas City, Missouri. Her online Get Ready With Me videos are getting millions of views thanks to her hilarious takedown of annoying habits, and it happens all while she applies beauty products. Take a look. Things that are disgusting. When somebody doesn't wash their hands and they just don't care. A girl I used to be friends with admitted she didn't wash her hands once to me. Then she had the audacity to wonder why I didn't let her hug me or anything afterwards. Like, hmm, I wonder why. People have Cheeto fingers. Somebody will leave a food container in their locker for over a week. Okay, off topic, but my hair salon just sent me home with this Davines mask. After one use, my hair is already way shinier. So thank you so much, and the hair salon is tagged below. That's it. Bye. They always say what's old is new again, right? Well, step aside, Coastal Grandma. It's all about Grandpa core in 2024. Grandpa fashion is trending right now. Think retro cardigans, boxy shirts and plaid, also bulky sweater vests and ties. This is at Ouija Bug showing off their Goodwill Grandpa style. Pinterest even named the eclectic grandpa style as one of their big trend predictions for 2024. The senior citizen style has made its way to social media with the hashtag grandpa core having more than 17 million views. It's all about the baggy style pants, boxy sweaters and loafers look. The comments include if I don't look like a grandpa, I don't want it and old people have better style. Well, for more information on any of these stories, we want you to head to our website L lsshow.com for life love shopping you'll find all of the latest topics previous episodes information on all of our guests and where you can watch the show and also please follow us on all our social media channels life love shopping is your life and style guide from a to z remember if you live it love it or buy it we talk about it right here on the show and in addition you can contact us reach out to us directly that email button is front and center we would love to hear from you we're back right after this Air, land, and sea. It's time for some flash travel. You know, the holidays aren't over at the most magical place on Earth. Walt Disney Resorts knows how to pull all of that together into one place. Well, actually, several places all around Walt Disney World. Matt Doolittle and I got a chance to find those sweet spots outside the gates of the Magic Kingdom. The Walt Disney World Resort is always a magical place to be at during the holidays. And even though there's plenty to do in the park, guess what? There's holiday magic outside of the park. And you don't need a ticket to experience them. First up, the Grand Floridian. And as you walk into the Grand Floridian, it is amazing. Inside of it is the gingerbread house. And this place is delicious. I mean, literally, it's delicious. I'll get to that in just one second. Inside, you can get brownie trees. You can get some peppermint bark. And believe it or not, see those shingles on there? It takes over a 1,000 pounds of honey. 600 pounds of powdered sugar, all for a great tasting shingle. This is literally one of the shingles. Mmm! 
And as you're enjoying the Grand Floridian, you can check out the Gasparilla Island Grill, where they have some really cool treats, like this present peppermint pop. This thing's really cool because it's a brownie with homemade peppermint inside of it. Then you've got this delicious snowman that is filled with spice mousse. The best part about it all is when you enjoy these treats, you get the best views ever of what? The Magic King. For over at Disney Beach Club Resort, the holiday celebration continues. Hey, it's Florida. Of course you can enjoy the beach. Now, during the holidays here at Disney's Beach Club Resort, you can order this holiday milkshake. It's a cookie butter milkshake with caramel drizzle, holiday sprinkles, and then it's topped with a Christmas tree cupcake. Oh, I love resort life. That's good. All right, now we're off to beautiful Disney Springs. Shopping, dining, and plenty of sweet treats. Emirates Patisserie is the place at Disney Springs if you want some delicious pastries, cakes, and unbelievable food. But during the holiday season, you won't believe what they have. Like these great treats. Come here, check this out. This is the holiday sweet petite cake. You got the hot cocoa cream brulee and the Christmas tree cream puff. Delicious. And what would the holidays be without chocolate from the ganachery right here at Disney Springs? And you know what? They've got the cure for the common chocolate. We got a surprise here. We gotta find out what's inside. It is the gingerbread Mickey chocolate pinata. It's got a special holiday surprise inside. Let's check it out. You know, Mitch, we've had a long day of all the festivities here at Disney Springs. So we, you know what? Let's take a load off here at Jack Lindsay's Hangar Bar. This holiday dish right here, the Naughty or Nice deviled eggs. And let's wash it down with some post-flight milk and cookies with Coquito. And then we're going to finish it up with an oh ham and cheese trees. But again, it's all about the presentation. Sage. You know, there's a lot of great shopping here at Disney Springs for the holidays. But you know what? My favorite store, of course, is the World of Disney Store, the largest Disney store in the world. I'm going to go in and grab a few, few things for the holidays. I'll be right back. And as you're working your way around this amazing area, you need to get yourself one of these complimentary maps. Why? It's going to give you the location of 19 different trees. Each one is themed with a different Disney character, movie, or show. Find them all. Take this map to the Redemption Center for a very special surprise. All right, here's number one. I'll give it to you early, Mitch. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas is the best Christmas ever! Thank you, Matt! Oh, good stuff, Mitch and Matt. Well, with New Year's Day just a few days away, it's time to start planning the ultimate menu. Here's celebrity chef Claire Robinson with some unique ideas for cooking and entertaining. Thanks for having me. Let's start with flavor. I like to enhance my holiday and winter dishes with College Inn broths and stocks. The brand is beloved by chefs and home cooks alike, and it's celebrating its 100 years anniversary of adding rich flavor to any dish you make from mashed potatoes to carrots and roasts, ranging from chicken broth and beef bone broth to vegetable stock. Collagen is made with a blend of farm-grown vegetables, quality chicken or beef, and unique seasonings. They come in organic, reduced sodium, and 99% fat-free options. Available at Walmart and local retailers near you. Visit collagen.com for more. Now let's go to dessert. President Whipped Cream is my secret weapon for elevating holiday desserts. From pies to brownies to my favorite, hot chocolate, its authentic gourmet French style actually reminds me of restaurant-grade whipped cream, with a long-lasting hold from the kitchen to the plate without all the work of hand whipping. It contains only the highest quality ingredients and no corn syrup. Available in original with Madagascar vanilla and extra creamy. At select stores across the U.S. and online at cheesetoyou.com. Make your holiday even sweeter and more delicious with Del Monte's ready-to-eat canned fruits. They are an easy way to introduce fruits to your favorite holiday recipes, all while getting your daily fruit intake. Plus, they're non-GMO and free from preservatives. Tons of options here, like sliced peaches and 100% juice, no sugar added sliced pears, and deluxe gold pineapple. You can use them in appetizers, sides, and desserts like pear berry buckle cake. You can even enjoy them as a snack straight out of the can. Available at Walmart and a grocery store near you. 
Head over to delmonte.com for recipes and more. Here's smart shopping expert Trey Bodge with some great holiday deals. The holidays have come to a close, but now is such a great time to shop. One of my must-dos post-holiday is browsing for those special items that I've been eyeing but didn't receive or that will give me a head start for the next season. There's no place better to do that than Target. Target is offering even more exciting deals. Starting December 26th, guests can shop for incredible deals thanks to the Target Clearance Run, the retailer's annual post-holiday sales event. Right now, guests can find special savings on thousands of items, including 50% off clothing and shoes for the family, toys, jewelry, and accessories. Plus, holiday decor, holiday family sleepwear, and beauty gift sets start at 50% off, and holiday candy is 30% or more off, making this a prime time to treat yourself or your loved ones. While exact inventory varies from store to store, incredible post-holiday season deals can be found in Target stores on Target.com and in the Target app. Check out the Target clearance run while supplies last. And here's another great gift idea for you that works well into the new year. The holidays are a great time to get amazing deals on the latest tech, helping you stay connected to loved ones. Some wireless providers make you choose between getting a great value and a great network. At T-Mobile, you can get both. They're offering the ultimate tech bundle. You can get a free smartphone, free smartwatch, and free earbuds. In addition, new and existing T-Mobile customers score with perks like free Netflix and free in-flight Wi-Fi. Check out all of T-Mobile's holiday deals at T-Mobile.com slash offers. We have got a great show planned for you, including our must-watch movie that's right around the corner, right here on Daily Flash. Welcome back to Daily Flash. For centuries, there has been a society hidden in plain sight working in secret to protect certain people from harm. Here's today's must-watch movie. I know you can feel their discomfort, Aaron. Watching you walk through a room full of white people was the most painful thing I've ever seen. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to take you to a job interview. There's a recruiting class starting right now, and we got to get you in it. Welcome to the American Society of Magical Negroes. I don't really understand. It's easier to say. What's the most dangerous animal on the planet? The shark. White people, when they feel uncomfortable. White people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of bad stuff for us. That's why we fight white discomfort every day. Because the happier they are, the safer we are. The name needs a little updating, maybe like magical black people, or I guess that doesn't have the same ring. Get ready. Oh, wow. Your first client is a Jason Munn. His morale is far too low. Hey. Hey. Darn it. I was hoping there was a station right next to him. Oh, is this one spoken for? No. Yeah, it's actually fun and weirdly relaxing. It's like being a secret agent with none of the danger. Hey, I'm Lizzie. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. She's great. Yeah, she's cool. You kidding? Come on, man. She's smart and funny. And... I know what you were doing going on about her. You're trying to set us up. No, 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 that's not what I was doing. You cannot have a relationship with Lizzie now because if you don't put Jason first, everyone's magic will fail. I've always felt like it's my job to make white people feel comfortable, and here it literally is. But maybe it shouldn't be. I got a great plan to ask her out, but I'm gonna need your help. Do you think you can, like, work your magic? Hey, are you talking about me? Hey. Oh my god. Wait, are you? But I traveled a long way. defied the society. Who was it? You didn't let her go like I told you. If you interfere with her or your client, you could have your memory erased. You won't even remember she existed. Even though we might never see each other again, I need you to know that what we had was real. I'm curious to see how you're going to make it out of all this. <laughs> Good baby. All right, thank you all for joining us. Good, we will see you on the next Daily Flash. Bye-bye, everybody.